So right here, we're just going to finish watching Derek cut the last few trees on this job. This is the, still the badge out. Look at the zoom on this Mavic right here. <laughs> this thing, a, a zoom way on in. I mean, really like it uh, quite a bit. But Derek is, uh, that's it. Pretty good sized creek right there. Derek's cutting up again, so he's just kind of trimming that SMZ up and wrapping it up. And you can see some of the drags laying on the, on the ground. And uh, of course, y'all have already seen where we've already got all the processing and all that stuff done. I ran uh, Friday, and that was a video that uh, you know I was talking about trying to get uh, wrapped up on and. See, there's some more drags over there on that side, that little finger right there. Chad's got to pick up, but this this is at lunch. I was actually filming all this at lunch. Derek ran through lunch trying to get done where we could get him moved. But um, that Friday, everything ran good, and I, I really didn't finish the video because I was pretty aggravated with things. But I had it set up to where I could leave at uh, between 10 and 10.30, and I short ran those trucks over to uh, a close mill to us, a hardwood putwood mill that's not just a few miles from us. And, and when the trucks got over there, the uh, the crane was down and they've got two knuckle boom loaders to help unload with. And not one, but both knuckle boom loaders was down. And so rather than them, than them trucks getting back between 10 and 10.30 for me to load them on the last round and me to get on the road, my last truck didn't roll in there until 12, a little after 12. And um, so it was, I throwed a load of logs on him real quick. And it was uh, 12.17 when I got down out of my loader to uh, to go and, and get on the road, going to where I was going, but... Uh, I was very frustrated, <laughs> to say the least, and I knew uh, coming in there that morning early like that, my dad was coming up there, and uh, I knew that uh, he was going to be moving equipment, and when he came up there that uh, he would know the how I was running, <laughs> and, and this is why we don't start at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. Because uh, when he got up there, he said, well, with you running like you're running, you can finish loading all the trucks. You can finish loading out all that wood today. And I'm like, no, that's not why I came up here as early as I did this morning, you know, to, uh, you know, finish, which it wouldn't have mattered. There's no way I could have loaded all the wood. They still, they still 15 or 16 more loads left laying there on the on the deck that I've got to load. I'll have to get there in the morning on Tuesday morning and I'll just kind of have to start picking through that stuff, man. And, and boy, when you get down to that last bit, I don't mind loading it. That doesn't bother me at all. And I don't mind picking through it, but it, it takes it takes time to uh, to do that and, and get through that stuff. But it... uh. It's gonna be kind of tough um, working through that stuff, and but kind of go back to what I was saying a while ago. I kind of got sidetracked a little bit. My dad, you know, if you if we were to get done, we start at five o'clock in the morning. And the way that he looks at things, well, heck, you you know, and and you say you're headed to the house at two. Well, he's thinking, well, man, you still two or three more hours before four o'clock or five o'clock. Y'all could load some more loads. You know what I mean? And uh, so that's the reason why I usually don't start loading until 7 o'clock in the morning because I would have to work a lot more hours uh, than I do. So anyhow, I kind of update you on what's going on. After Kevin got moved there Friday, and uh, I was, it was about 11.30, Kevin called me and he said, man, he said, I didn't let a pin come out of my head on the war towel and uh man it destroyed some stuff on the head and just messed it up <clears throat> pretty bad so he he was he was reaching out to me i know what he was doing he was reaching out to me trying to see if i could you know if i could fix it and get it back together for him for tuesday 
and I was already pretty ticked already because the way the the mill was it done our trucks and the way it was working out with our trucks and and I told him I said Kevin I said ain't no way you gonna get that thing fixed before Tuesday I said it ain't gonna happen and uh, he was making calls left and right trying to get you know somebody out there to to help him out of course it's a hot Friday on a holiday weekend Labor Day weekend and um so i didn't tell him what i was doing or anything like that well i i went ahead and left at 12 and uh i got you know at 12 it's 12 17 i got on the road and i had a long way to go too man and so i got over um uh, i got over into georgia get my phone rang and it was kevin and he said uh he said i don't know where you're going or what you're doing and he said but uh he said, I got to have some parts from Wartal. And, uh, of course, I knew Wartal has a has a warehouse and a hub right there in Noonan, Georgia, which is just outside of Atlanta, kind of south of Atlanta, just a little bit, not very. Well, it's actually kind of south of Douglasville right there. And uh, I uh, I told him, I said, well, uh, He's wanting to know where I was. He wanted to know if I was going through Georgia or to Georgia. <laughs> and I said, when he started talking like that, I knew he needed something from Wartal. And, uh, but I was trying to get through Atlanta before 5 o'clock. And, man, I was going to hit it right at 5. I actually got to 285 on the west side of Atlanta right at 5. So I was okay. So, But when I got to the other side of Atlanta... Man, from 285 to like the Turner Hill exit going east out of Atlanta, I guess every freaking body in dead gum Atlanta lives on that side now, I guess. But if you hit that thing at 5 o'clock, you are so screwed. It is unbelievable. So anyhow, I told him he, they needed needed this stuff from, from Wartal. And so I looked at it real quick. I said, man, I'm only 30 miles from Noonan right now. I said, but I can't get it today. I said, uh, I said I'll. Um, I said when I come back through on Monday, which will be this afternoon when y'all. I said I can pick it up then. So he got me all the contact information. So here in a little bit, when I get on the road and start heading back, then I'm gonna make a contact and then I'm gonna go by Wartal and pick up the stuff that that he needs. So, which is gonna be fine because. I still got to load all that wood out up there where I'm at, and we got to get those trucks out and, and all that stuff like that. But, uh, and then, so it's going to give him time to get his stuff fixed. We got a welder coming and all that stuff for Tuesday and, and everything, which y'all won't be able to see any of that because I'm going to be 60 miles from Kevin and them. If I can get there before they get done and can film some, I will, but we'll just have to see <clears throat> how it works. If I'm there or not, I may get Kevin to do some filming for me with his phone, and then I'll get the videos from him and use them. But uh, so I was looking at the hurricane a while ago, and Dorian is coming in, and it looks like it's fixing a flat, just mow Florida down. I don't see how it's going to possibly turn or anything like that. It may turn and, and head kind of north and go up toward the georgia and the carolinas coast right there but man that thing looks like it's fixing a fixing a smack florida about three quarters of the way down and and smoke it and and probably will go across it and get in the gulf and lord have mercy ain't no telling what it's going to do then when it goes through but uh very very powerful storm hope you know the people in the bahamas down there i can't imagine what they probably went through because i mean they had nowhere to go you know they can't get in the car and drive i mean they're on the island you know and and uh with limited uh places to go and get and things like that you know but uh so derek he's uh he's about to wrap it up here he's getting these last few trees and and uh i was just trying to get some get a little bit more footage to uh kind of get me through the weekend here and, and uh wrap wrap everything up on my end and all that but it's always good to finish a job it's always really good to finish one that's so painful like these right here these these jobs 
several people noted in the comments that, that they didn't realize that they they didn't realize Mississippi had terrain like this, and and we do. We have some. We don't have mountains like what they have in Virginia or out west or anything like that. But I'm gonna tell you, the ground that we have is just as steep as some of that. We have bluffs and cliffs and stuff like that right here and all that, and it makes for some very difficult running. So I was bringing the drone back over here to uh, to me and fix and put it up and put my lunch cooler up and, and uh, get this video finished and get it saved and rendered and get it uploaded for uh, all y'all to watch i appreciate y'all watching y'all can check out all the clickable stuff down below we'll catch y'all later later taters